E36s were never designed for a double din radio. Retrofitting them can be really difficult, and that's for a few factors. One is there's not a lot of space, and two is you have to move the climate control unit to another location. So, in version 1.0, I successfully mounted a double din unit down below, but this is version 2.0, and I'm gonna move it up top where it should be and show you how I cleanly did it now that there's some new parts available for these cars. Now version 1.0 wasn't just a double din radio installed down by the shifter, it was a complete system overhaul. Here's the old one. At least from a size perspective it looks a lot nicer. I got the BAV sound speaker package all around so while I was at it I replaced all of the speakers in the car. You know they're 20, almost 30 years old so that needed to be done. Mounting the stereo isn't exactly easy, so I had to get creative. Make these two into one. So once I figured out a way to get it mounted, I added the final touch, which was the OEM lightweight stereo delete panel up top, and that finished it off. Overall, I was really happy with it, but there was room for improvement. Hence, why we're moving on to version 2.0. Got some seriously cool upgrades for the LS1 E36 today. What I've got here is a new radio setup for the E36. Now, am I happy with the old setup? Yes, it's worked very, very well. Nice head unit, nice speakers all around. A little disappointed in the bath sound speakers, for being honest. How it's all mounted is nice, but it could be better. Having the radio down low, like in front of the shifter, obviously isn't optimal. It has worked well, and it would work long term just fine, but improvements could be made. Moving the radio up high where the stock one was, was a long-term goal, but that isn't easy in an E36. That area was never designed for a double din unit. You can put a single din unit up there super easily, but when you do a double din, you have to move the climate control somewhere else. And doing that cleanly isn't exactly easy, but I found some new parts. I'm not sure how new they are. They're just custom made. 3D printed parts on Etsy. Now you saw in a previous video, I bought a 3D printer. These are parts that I actually wanted to make myself. I just haven't dug into the whole CAD software and, and all that learning designing. It's on the list of things to do. But for now, this is the mount for the climate control to move down low. And what that will do is it sits on top of here and then the climate control goes in that and then that sits like that and it looks pretty decent. And then for up top, again from Etsy, is a 3D printed bezel. And to go with that, I really want wireless CarPlay and Android Auto in that car. I have it in the Porsche and the Duramax. I have it in the E36, but it's wired. And it's honestly, I don't like having the cord there. It looks ugly. I don't like plugging it in all the time. So I know, first world problems. Just not a big cord guy, you know? It's kind of annoying. The wire sits up front there and it's kind of ugly that it's always there. I'm just, anyway, it's gotta go. So I did get an S8 Premium from Atoto. They sent this to me. I'm gonna try it out. In the E36, it obviously has wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, along with a whole bunch of other features. Moving the radio up is gonna just make the access a lot better. It's easier to hit buttons, easier to see things. Pretty excited to get this done. So let me start tearing all the old stuff out. Now some of you had asked how I actually mounted this. Well, it wasn't the most elegant solution. Basically what I did, I made this bracket here, which bolted it into a factory location there, nut and bolted that to this frame. And it worked out pretty well. It definitely stayed solid in there. Um, and I didn't add any holes to the car or anything like that. And that's gonna have to come down here for the new climate control. 
This is gonna have to go back up here. The new radio. Take out this delete panel, which is very nice. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to cut out this guy here. It's not a big deal. It's really the only thing left in the way. I do wanna open up the Atoto and see what all is in there. Should have everything I need for install. Big thanks to them for sending this. These are great units. It's what I have in the Porsche. It's, it's like an Android-based system. So it has lots of options, to upgrades, apps, good stuff like that. That 3D printed piece is a perfect fit for this Atoto. Super nice, tight fit. Couldn't ask for any better. That's gonna look really nice in there. Seamless OEM-like. Happy with that. Once I got everything pulled out of the car, you can see there's a good many pieces that were in there and there's a good many new pieces that I'm gonna be adding. And along with that, of course, is a decent amount of wiring that I'm gonna have to do. Not only that, I gotta figure out the new bracketry and how I'm actually gonna hard mount this new radio. Now the old Alpine harness is obviously quite a bit different from the new Atoto harness, so I gotta cut this apart and then rewire it to the new harness, which in all reality really isn't that bad. So I'm gonna knock that out quick so that's done and then we'll worry about the mounting in the car. Maybe tricky. Wiring, done. Gotta test it in the car real quick. And then after I make sure it works and all the speakers go to the right corners, front and rear, I will heat shrink all of the connectors. Don't hate on the butt connectors. NASA uses them so I can use them. And I don't know how to solder. These are fast and easy and cheap. And they, 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 just, they just work. Everything works. First try. I know, couldn't really believe it. And then we're ready to move on to the mounting of everything. So first I gotta cut out that little bar that separated the climate control and the stock radio. So obviously right here, this is gonna stop the radio from going in. So that's, that's gonna go bye-bye. Now, first attempt at trying to fit this new radio, we ran into a few issues, but I'll go over them a little more in depth a little bit later. I wanna move on to the climate control. Work on the climate control. So I think that's gonna be a little bit easier getting all this stuff to work. I don't know if these connections I need to glue together. If it's a press fit, I don't know. That's why I got another sunglass holder. That's what you wanna call it. And I also have two of these because I think the back of this, I have to grind away to be able to fit all the way in there. Right there we hit. So definitely need some more space. It seems incredibly tight. So I actually have to sand all that away on the edges on both sides for it to fit. Don't love that, but gotta do what you gotta do. dog if that's not perfect I don't know what is but I believe this still needs trimmed Nope, I guess I gotta trim some more. Try as I may to get it in there as it stands with the grinding I did, it just wouldn't fit. So I gotta take it back out and do some more grinding, just a little bit here and there to get that perfect fit. I don't wanna have to smash it in there and I also don't want it to be loose, obviously. Well, 
One more time, maybe. Now I need to grind away the back of this. Now you really only need a tiny bit of grinding on the back of the climate control unit, just enough so it fits in there without touching the heater control box. And I mean, it really is just the smallest amount, probably a quarter inch. Just make sure it still works because there's some stuff that got hot back here. This was just a test piece, but if it works, it works. Oh, well, would you look at that? I believe this guy works just fine. I just gotta get all the, find all the little screws and put it back together. I actually took the climate control unit apart to do the grinding, just to lessen the chances of hurting anything. So now I had to find all the tiny little screws and put it all back together. I actually took this thing apart months ago. I know, I know, hot glue, but before you guys give me a bunch of crap, I actually prefer hot glue over a bunch of other products out, out there like JB Weld stuff, because hot glue doesn't necessarily break, it's not brittle, it has some flex in it, and it's obviously an instant bond, pretty much. So I'm just gonna do a couple little dabs on there. It doesn't really need it, but I think it's gonna make installation better, easier, more solid. The screws were just, they just weren't it. Too big, too noticeable, didn't like it. I'm also going to swap out the USB plug I had for my old radio and put this on the new one. That's a pretty, pretty solid OEM Plus look, if I do say so myself. Uh, just to throw it in the car. Climate control is all situated and looking good. That's done. I just have to move on to the stereo, but we have a few issues. Now we have a little bit of a problem with swapping in this new Atoto unit. So this is the new Atoto, and you can see how thick it is. Pretty standard for a double din. Well, this is my old radio. You can see just how much thinner it is, and I didn't account for that when they sent me this. So in the meantime, I'm going to put the old radio back in until I can get a new thinner one from Ototo, which they do offer. I just don't want the car to be down that long. I'd rather get everything situated and get the actual double din mount in there. I got a new one of those. I actually got another wiring harness, so I don't have to hack up the wiring harness that I already have for Ototo. I can swap that back and forth. So I need to rewire this again, as fun as that is, and figure out a mounting solution. This is time to make this and this whole again so we can move on. While I'm working on some wiring on the BMW, I'd let you guys know that this video is brought to you by Vitoman and their Jump 1000 power station. Now the Vitoman Jump 1000 packs 1000 watts of output power, 1408 watt hours of capacity to support a whole bunch of appliances and devices like an electronic stove, a microwave, air conditioning, fridge, lots of good stuff like that. You can even expand the capacity of this by adding an additional 1,548 watt hour battery. And not only that, you can add a solar panel if you'd like. The Jump 1000 has 12 ports, so you can power whatever you'd like. You've got AC outlet, USB outlets, USB-C outlets, DC ports, and also an outlet for a jump starter. So if your vehicle dies, you can actually use this Vitoman Jump 1000 to restart your car. Plus it even has a built-in super bright flashlight on the back that offers a bunch of different modes. The Jump 1000 also offers over 3,100 battery charge cycles. 
Huge shout out to Vitoman. I've used this unit a couple of times, uh, one in particular camping with my truck, and it worked phenomenally. Awesome unit. You can check these out with the link I have below, and you can use a discount code to get 10% off, and that code is VTOMR. What should have been a half an hour wiring job turned into like a two hour wiring job because I didn't have a wiring diagram for the BMW connector. I didn't have the wiring diagram for the Alpine connector and I didn't have the wiring diagram for the Alpine parking brake fake sensor delete thing. I'm gonna test this and see if it works. It should work, I don't know, we'll see. Turned on, so that's a good, that's a good start. Cool, works for me. Now I just gotta figure out a way to mount this. Relative terms, the wiring was the easy part. So I have a bunch of little assortments of screws. I think my plan is to actually attach this like this and I can go underneath and actually screw this in. I'll, I'll show you guys then, but first I need to figure out if I can mount this. Even with all these screws I had, I couldn't find the exact right one that I needed for the radio. I had ones that were the correct thread and pitch but they were too long or they were too short, etc. So it was on to plan B, and I was thinking I was gonna try to mount these brackets on the side, but I needed them to be smaller. And now that I moved these brackets to the side, I could use the factory screws that came with radios and you'll see my plan here in a bit as to how exactly I was going to use these L-shaped brackets to mount the radio in the car. So I think I have a pretty solid plan. I mounted the brackets on the side and then I'm going to nut and bolt bolts basically like a stud and that's going to go up near where the center vent is and then I'll just have to drill a hole and put a nut and it'll hang like this on either side. I think that'll be pretty strong, relatively easy to install. I'll find out soon enough. Turns out the stud sticking up that far doesn't leave room for the center vent. But I have a plan. So if I flip the screw so the screw comes down from the top, very, very little guys, beveled edges. It's like one in the morning, I don't remember what these are called. Anyway, these will basically sit flush up top. Illustration of my plan is to remove the center vent and put screws down through that plastic bracket that sits at the bottom of the vent between the vent and the stereo and that would attach to the L-shaped brackets and hold it in place. I need a way to hold the nut underneath here. My plan is a little bit of hot glue. See if it works. Positioning is pretty dang important. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. You know what? Maybe tape would be better. A little bit of tape to hold the nut in place just to make sure they didn't fall out. I'm actually going to have the bracket cinch them down as well, so they're not going anywhere. I think that mounting solution is going to work just fine with putting the screws from the top down instead of the bottom up. Let me go throw it in the car. I'm going to hook the wiring up too just because I think it's all going to work. Then we can move on to the finished install of everything and testing and all that good stuff. Radio's in, that screw solution worked perfectly. It's actually solid in there. Like the radio is solid enough like that. Of course, if you push the bottom hard enough, like you can move the whole radio, but why would you push the radio that hard? That'd be just silly. So now let me put the climate control in for the final time. Then we'll get the overall finished look of everything.
first. Yeah, what concho is that? <laughs> well, I'm really, really happy with how that came out. I'm gonna insert some B-roll here that'll be from in the future. It's like two in the morning, so it's dark. I wanna get the car outside and get you guys a, a better view with more sunlight and stuff. finish isn't perfect it is really really good especially for just 3d printed parts that I got off of Etsy from Australia everything looks really really nice in here it looks almost as good as OEM it's as good as I can expect that climate control is such a tight fit down there like lengthwise width wise height wise so a lot of grinding going back and forth with a belt sander and doing all that I ended up actually taking the hot glue off because I had to grind it down even more and it's such a good press fit that I didn't glue it a second time. I just left it stay in via press fit. <coughs> but everything is tested, radio works, all functions work, Apple CarPlay works, climate control, all that stuff works. I even put in the little blanks in the sunglass holder and, it, and now I have a sunglass holder again. I didn't have that before with the old radio. So hopefully you guys can use some of the tips and tricks I used here to get this doubled in mounted because it's really hard to find info on how to do it and how to mount it and all that good stuff. I'll have a link to everything below and in the future I'll update this video when I get the thinner one from a Toto. Again, shout out to them. I do have their radio in my Porsche and I love it. I wouldn't be able to complete this video if I didn't showcase just how much of a mess I made. And of course, a really quick time lapse of me cleaning it up. Garage was dirty, inside of the car was dirty, stuff scattered everywhere, so I had to clean it. <laughs> 